Yes, good. Watch me, good girl. Katie, get it. Katie. Yes, good girl. And Ringo. Our dog's just playing in the yard. Katie Peekaboo. It's where they belong, right? Yes, good stand. But this isn't any yard. This is a prison yard. Yes, good girl. The one at the maximum security Bedford Hills Correctional Facility in Bedford Hills, New York. Morning. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. On the second floor of the school building. What's going on with you? For the inmates here. It's been a great week. The women in green. <laughs> this is lab work. So what's a third of the five Gs? Black labs. A little bit of barking in the kennel, but after that, he settled in. And yellow labs. <laughs> Welcome, Rio. And welcome, Aster. This knowledge is important, but what's much more important is your attitude. They're all part of a program called Puppies Behind Bars. Puppies Behind Bars trains prison inmates in New York and New Jersey uh, to raise service dogs that we donate to first responders um, and also explosive detection canines, which go to law enforcement. Great and some of our service dogs go to veterans, veterans and first responders, yes. Gloria Gilbert Stoga began Puppies Behind Bars 25 years ago. Jessica, will you write that down, please? The program is now in six different prisons, male and female. Okay. Puppy Sand Bars offers an opportunity to contribute to society even while you're locked up. Um, and, you know, we're in a prison where there's over 600 inmates here, 16 have chosen to do this. Nikki Adamando's case made national headlines. Under the Domestic Violence Survivors Act, her murder sentence was recently reduced. Once facing 19 to life, she'll be free in two and a half years. Okay, Ringo, shake. Yes, good shake. Oh, thank you. Ringo. Until then, she says she's dedicated yes, to the dogs. Thank you. Do you feel like you're giving back in some way, that you're using your time here beneficially to, to help the people on the outside? I do. While there's no way to right some of the wrongs of what has happened, what's brought us here, this is a way that we can be productive with our time and do something positive that will ultimately give back. Heidi, watch me. Bring it. Beyond the walls at Bedford, Good puppies. the canines have come to Connecticut. You want this ball? You want this ball? Speak. Bear and Heidi are graduates. Ooh, she snatched it. Officially, two of the five fully funded puppies behind bars now walking the beat across the state. Good boy. They largely fulfill therapeutic roles. He is a full ADA recognized service dog. In Middletown, Jay Bodell is the partner. Take a photo. And Officer Bear's best friend. Essentially, prisoners, people ultimately that you've locked up, you and your colleagues, are training your partner, your best friend. It's emotional. I see these individuals at the beginning of that negative journey. To see them in that environment and how they've bettered themselves and want to give back to police officers and veterans is emotional to me. And it was an experience I'll never take for granted. It's amazing the compassion they have towards these dogs. They love these dogs like they're their own. The highlight of my career was getting trained by inmates and getting a partner like Heidi that we go every day to work, my best friend, go home every day to work, and we get to make people happy. Back in Bedford, 24-7, it is puppy alongside prisoner. Yes, good, watch me, good girl. Training typically takes two years. What a nice girl, ask your stand. Yes, and in stand. the face of so much sorrow, so much regret. How'd you get so smart? How there are faces so like this. I have uh, the sentence of 25 years to life. So this is something that I, I'm aware of every day but I don't let that define me. And something that I try to empower the other women with is, you know, wear the green. Don't let the green wear you. Yes, good girl. This program is an amazing opportunity to give back, to do something productive in um, a setting that has few options to really do something good. These highly trained service dogs are making a huge difference in people's lives and in the lives of communities. And yeah, that never gets old. It's 24-7 training and it's hard work, but it's good work. We could sit in a cell and do nothing all day or we could work with these animals all day long and know that they're gonna leave here with the purpose. Yes, good high five, good boy kiss. Thank you so much. In Bedford Hills, New York. Bye guys, see you in a bit. Jim Altman, Fox 61 News.
And in Connecticut, Puppies Behind Bars has placed dogs with the Middletown Police at Yale, in Groton, in Naugatuck, and at the Torrington Police. Over the past 25 years, they've raised about 2,500 dogs to work with police and veterans all across the country. And if you want to learn more about the program, we have a link at fox61.com. What an incredible program, Jimmy. In a lot of ways, you know, it, it gives those puppies a purpose, but it also gives those inmates a purpose while they're incarcerated. No, and it comes full circle. And Jimmy, I mean, to even have access to a maximum security prison is, you know, in our business, not often happen happening. So it's really incredible that you got in to show us this program. Tell me, do the dogs stay in the prison or do they leave or how does that work? So it's a good question, Jen. That's part of the volunteer program. So families, for instance, will come in, take the dogs for a weekend, for a week, acclimate them to their house, their neighborhood, maybe the mall. Then they go back to training at the prison until they are ready, usually after two years, to join a police officer or a veteran for their next life. And, and Jimmy, just it, it gives this human element to people who are incarcerated. We hear about prisons all the time and we tell stories about them on the news, but it gives a human element to be able to see them in environments like this. Incredible story. You have to love the labs. They, they are adorable, <laughs> that's for sure. And hardworking. Jimmy, thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, guys.